Hi, I'm Madison and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new weekly reading vlog for you. I did just start Happenstance by Tessa Bailey. This is coming out on November 7th and it is her reverse harem contemporary romance. I am 20% in. It is hilarious AF right now. So this book idea came from like a bunch of like TikToks that Tessa was doing and then she ended up just writing a book based off those TikToks and, and that is what this is. So, oh shoot, I don't have my phone with me to talk. Okay, so it's about, I don't remember any of their names. Number one, remember Banks, Tobias, Gabe. I remember all the guys' names. Oh my God, what's her name? Oh no, I don't remember the main girl's name. Okay, but <laughs> what I can tell you, you got our main girl, she works as the like sandwich delivery girl at like this big uh, journalist ma magazine newspaper. And she really wants to be a reporter for it instead. And so she decides to like go out to um, Roosevelt Island to like do a stakeout of like this deputy mayor. And while she's there, like, you know, she goes to go leave and take the tram back from Roosevelt Island to like mainland. And she gets into a tram cart with these three random guys and like there's a mechanical failure and she's trapped on this tram cart with these three random dudes and they're all like instantly just like really into her and Tobias is the one who like instigates everything and when she gets in the tram cart and he's like this tall British dude and she's looking at him and she's like oh why like why do I recognize this guy like why does he look so familiar and he dead on just looks her in the eye and goes you recognize me from porn and she goes what he goes I'm a massive porn star you've probably seen some of my stuff and she's like Oh my God. And the other guys on this tram cart are like, who is this man? What is wrong with him? Why would he just say that out of nowhere? It was the funniest shit in the entire world. Comedic relief to the max, okay? And then you've got Banks and he's a professional rugby player turned rugby coach. Um, he's super hot as well. He kind of looks like the Duke from Bridgerton, word for word, that's what they say he looks like. Um, and then you've got Gabe and Gabe is this really cute construction worker guy and he is just like a cute cuddly gigantic like teddy bear. I don't know why I couldn't remember the word for teddy bear. I almost said lumberjack, but he, <laughs> which I guess it wouldn't be wrong, but he's not. He's like a cute cuddly teddy bear. And what ends up happening is like she has this like instant connection with them and then like things start getting really weird and heated and she's like, what the fuck is this? She's like, what? like literally a, like a foursome is about to happen on this tram cart and then it starts up again. They land, like they get back and she just bolts. She runs for it. But when she goes to go run for it, she ends up like one of the guys ends up stealing her lanyard, which is like her work lanyard. So they know where she works. And then all three of them show up the next day to her place of work and basically proposition her to enter like a reverse harem with them. And she's like, what is this? She's like, are you serious right now? She's like, no. She's like, what do I look? She's like, what is this? She's like, and she's like, what do you think this is? The funniest things in the entire world. Like the comedic relief in this is high class. I was dying. It is like a little bit strange because I feel like every other reverse harem I've read has been like a dark romance. And I don't know, I feel like Normally the guys like know each other before and like this is like a very weird reverse harem because none of the guys know each other at all. They've never been in any of these kind of relationships before. It's set in like our regular legit world and there's just a reverse harem that's about to like it's so weird at the same time because I feel like normally when you think of reverse harems you think of them in like a very fictionalized sense of like oh, this would like, really never happen. Like, you know, it could be a megaverse. It could be like Tate James's super dark like romances. But like, then there's this one and I don't know what it is about it that just feels like, it just felt like it came out of nowhere. Like, and it's fine, but I just feel like that's my only issue at the moment is I feel like this reverse harem just like <laughs> popped up and appeared and I'm like, what? It was like way too much was happening at once, but we'll see. I'm still having a really fun time with it. I'm excited to see where it's gonna keep on going and yeah, that's my little update for happenstance. I'm very excited for it overall and yeah. I figured out I figured out why this reverse harem feels so weird compared to other ones, and that is because normally in all the other reverse harems I've read, they're not normally all part of the harem, like from the get-go. Like normally like she'll be with one of them and then another one, and like they're not normally all interacting and doing the sexy sex all four of them together from the start like normally there's like a build up for me and that's what the difference is here i finally it took me like a hot like i'm still only read like an extra chapter since i talked to you guys but that's the reason why it feels so strange da there we go by the way her name is elise okay 
And I have to have to say, like, I'm now, like, 30% in. The way that these men are all just putty for her, the way that they're just, like, so enamored and think that she is just, like, the an angel who fell in the little sky is the cutest shit in the entire freaking world. I cannot even. I will say, Tobias is seriously, like, I think he's going to hit him. Gabe is my favorite currently, but Tobias could. Tobias really could. His humor, his, like, cheekiness... I don't know. Okay, so it is the next, oh, I'm very shiny. It is the next day. Um, I'm now 50% into the book. We had our first scene between the three of them. It was very good. But what I want to talk about first is the fact that they <laughs> all obviously went on a date with her, all three of them, and they all sent her something beforehand. And obviously, you know, Gabe sends her like a bouquet of like yellow flowers. Banks sends her red flowers. And Tobias sends her an eggplant. He sends her an eggplant. <laughs> he sends her an eggplant bouquet. This man is growing on me like no other. It is also so just like real and awkward and quirky too. Like it, it just feels like Tessa Bailey. And I love it. So I'm going to keep reading, but I'm 50% in and it's going great. Hello, okay, so I have just finished Half and Stars by Tessa Bailey. And what am I giving it? A 4 to 4.5 out of 5 stars. Honestly, it ended up super surprising me. Considering that when I started this out, I was kind of like, oh, not too sure where it was going. As it kept going on, it just got better and better and better. And I am so shooketh. Not only that, but I did just get my nails done. Let me show you them. They actually look really sick. I am so in love with my new nails. Aren't they amazing? But I finished the book while getting it done, which was choices because I read one of the hottest sex scenes of my entire life in that she did a really, really good job with the like the whole wide choose of the whole like four way scenes. I got to give her serious props and it was just so unique. And her like spice writing and her dirty talk is like she honestly, Tessa Bailey writes some of the best dirty talk, hands down, no holds, no bar, no hold, no holds bar, but whatever that saying is, that 100% so freaking good. I adore the shit out of it. There's also the brat kink in this, which I haven't really read before. I've only read it a couple, like, I think I read it, like, maybe once. And that was, like, in a, like, dom sub relationship version. But in this, bros, it was so hot. Like, he literally was, like, oh, my God, when he was calling her a brat, my, like, insides just exploded. I was, like, this is so good. So it's some of the hottest, hottest things in the entire world. I don't have my Kindle with me, so I can't, like, tell you the exact scenes. But when I tell you that that scene together was so well done... I've got to give her like a plus plus like recommendation there like so good so apart from the fact of like I don't think I would recommend this to like a beginner of like reverse harems like why choose romances just because it is so different but if you're someone who has read them before it's actually like a really fresh take on it and it kind of like flips a lot of things around and it's just very unique in that sense so I had a lot of fun with it oh my god like this is like the simpiest of simps of like a reverse harem I have ever read. Like they were all such simps for her. It is hilarious. So yeah, I dug it. Um, don't know what I'm gonna read next. I have different choices. So I'll let you guys know once I do start, whatever I start next. And yeah, it's gonna be it. Okay, catch you guys up later. Bye. Good afternoon. How are we doing? I'm doing okay, quite honestly. I don't really know why I'm in a little bit of a funk today, but I did just finish an entire book. I just read Just Between Us by Madison Wright. This is coming out. I like November 17, 18, 19, sometime this month. Um, it was actually really cute. There is no spice in this at all, by the way. It is fade to black, which I honestly wasn't mad about. I think it just depends on certain books. Sometimes you go into them and you're kind of like, ah, oh, there's a fade to black scene. There was no sex. I'm so upset. This was not one of those cases. It made sense for this book. It made sense for the way that this book was done, that it wasn't spicy. Sure, if it was spicy, would that have been nice? 100%. But it wasn't, and that didn't detract anything from this book. Not like a total like five out of five stars. Like it's definitely somewhere between like a three to a four, probably a solid four stars. It is this kind of Southern romance that is just at its core, super adorable and super sweet. And I was just smiling to myself the entire time because it was just the absolute cutest. So you have Camden and Ellie. Ellie is the property manager for a apartment complex and her parents own like a whole string of them. And she is consistently under pressure from them to perform. And you know, she fraternizes too much with her residents. She gets along with them. She goes to their events and to their parties. And she's like friends with her residents and her parents like, you cannot do this. You know, you're going to final strike if we see you breaking any more rules, like that's it. So she's in the final strike with them. But when the book starts off the night beforehand, she goes to this party 
and she meets this guy and they kiss and it's like amazing and she's like wonderful whatever the next day that guy walks into the leasing office because it turns out that he has rented one of her apartments and she's like oh my god the guy who i was with last night is here i cannot fraternize the residents that's like the biggest no-no of them all and that's camden and camden is there because he's taking a bit of a break because he's a photographer out in la and his life has just been going a bit too crazy lately so he's come back to this small town in Tennessee where his best friend lives to kind of work for his best friend instead for two months to kind of like figure out where he is in life. And so he is right off the bat very much into Ellie and really wants to be with her, but she off the bat is like, she shuts him out because she's like, we can't be together. And she's very hot and cold throughout this book, but being like, I wanna be with him, but I can't be with him. And him the entire time, he keeps doing all these really sweet and cute things. And I was literally, dying i was dying this man he makes her tea every single night okay always makes her tea and she calls him one night when he's not there and she's like i made tea but like it just doesn't taste the same when you're not here and he's like i have something to confess to you i put honey in your tea and i never told you and i have progressively been adding more and more honey to your tea to see if you would ever notice and she's like that's why it's so sweet and he <laughs> Oh my god, I cannot even. Oh, they were just, it was actually such an adorable, just like, this is like the per, like honestly, out of every book I've ever read, this is the perfect fall autumnal read you will ever read in your entire life. It does take place between Halloween and Thanksgiving. So you do see Halloween at the beginning of this book. Thanksgiving is around about the 50% mark. I really, really did love this. I just think they kind of put me in a bit of depressive mood because they were like, it, it was just such a sweet and cute romance. And the guy in this, like Camden just had my whole heart melting. And now I'm just depressed because of how single I am. So like, that is a huge positive in the book. Um, I'm just feeling a little depressed now and am like in a reading slump. <laughs> how do you finish a book and instantly get into a slump? Like, you know, like sometimes you finish a book and you're like, okay, I know what I'm gonna read next. I finish this book and I'm sitting here and I'm like, I don't know, like nothing is appealing to me right now. I hate that, I'm so annoyed. So I'm gonna try and figure that out, but we'll see. That's where I'm currently at. And catch you guys up later, Gray. You know, there are a lot of people who are like, oh my God, you live in Vegas sometimes. Like, isn't Vegas just a gross desert? Um, no, it is literally one of the prettiest places I have ever lived in my entire life. Like, you get these kind of beautiful sunsetting mornings all the time. Like, this is what I get to wake up to. And it is absolutely stunning. Hello, okay, so it is my birthday currently. Um, I'm about to head out with my mum now for a little bit, but I wanted to give you guys an update because I'm currently 60% into a new book that I have not updated you guys about at all because it's so good. But I mean, I've been reading it every night before bed and staying up until like one in the morning to read it, even though I have to wake up at like 5.30 in the morning because it is that good. What does that tell you? And I know, I know, my last clip, I was like, I feel like I'm in a slump. I don't know what I feel like reading. So what did I pick up? A dark reverse harem. Why am I not surprised? They are just like my bread and butter. I swear to God at this point, like I am so addicted to them. And this has definitely given me like, I don't know. Ever since I read Tate James, it has just been like a rabbit hole for me. And they're like my comfort reads at this point. I dig them to death. So I'm currently reading um, Find Me by Ashley N. Rostek. It's got this really gorgeous cover actually. Um, and it's book one in her Wit Sex series. So there's gonna be four books, which I just found out about. And the fourth one isn't coming out until she doesn't even know when, but it's fine. It's fine, apparently they're all in cliffhangers, so I'm a, little, <laughs> I'm a little annoyed at myself for doing that. But it is a dark reverse harem, it's a wide choose romance. I'm like 70% of the first one and she's not actually like in a relationship with any of them yet, but she's kind of starting with the twin brothers. But you're following this girl and her name is Shiloh and um, she is in wet sack. She's 18 years old. She was supposed to have gone to like her senior year of high school, but you know, that didn't happen because her entire family was murdered. Um, and they were murdered by her, what? Well, I actually don't want to spoil it for you because you find out like as you see her flashbacks, but they were murdered by a man that was obsessed with her basically. And so the guy who was obsessed with her came to, you know, come take her, ended up murdering her dad, then her mum, and then her twin sister. And then she went to Witseg with her uncle who was a US Marshal and lived in Alaska for a year. And now she's in Arizona, going to finally complete her senior year of high school. She's very traumatized, like still has a lot of PTSD from, you know, <laughs> being kidnapped and almost killed by her like 
pedophilic stalker. But she moves in to this house with like the life insurance money and next door are these like four brothers, the Stone brothers. And so it's her romance with the four of them. I'm in love with it so far. It has been so amazing. It has just been so bingeable and so quick. I think the first book's like less than 300 pages though. But her and the guys, I'm so in love. Like this is like my favorite kind of thing when it comes to like why choose romances because like each of them has like a different personality and like a different dynamic with her and like how it all progresses as well is just so badass. And like, I'm just so in love with them. Like I think it's Creed and Colt. Creed and Cole are the twins. The twins are like my entire life. So they're the same age as her. And then there's two older brothers, Knox and Keelan, and they're both well, the older brothers. And Knox is like the one that's like very dark and broody and like isn't really talking to her, but like is protective. And then Keelan's like the total flirty older brother. And then out of Creed and Colt, Colt is like the golden retriever. And then Creed is like a little more stoic. Um, so I'm really digging them all. And we've had such great scenes so far. Nothing like steamy or anything like that has actually happened. We've only had two kisses so far at the 70% mark. If you like Tate James's Madison Kate Quartet, because that one's set like more new adultish, because this is like new adultish as well, definitely check this one out because I'm so in love with it. It's been so good. Very flirty, very fun. And just like, oh my God, the way that they're just like instantly, oh, I'm so, I'm, I can't even explain how much I'm just in love with this. Although the funniest thing is the fact that when she meets one of the brothers, I think Creed for the very first time, she's like, hi, I'm your new neighbor. And he goes, I know, I hear you screaming every night, you wake me up. And she's like, Ugh. I was like, oh my God, bro. It was so good. Oh my God, it's just the cutest thing in the entire world. I'm so dead over it. But there are like obviously those regular triggers that come from, you know, dark reverse harem romances, so. Anyway, I need to have it with my mum because it's getting late and we're gonna go pick up vegan macaroons for my birthday dessert um, and also just do some regular shopping and stuff. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll catch you guys up later. Goodbye. Hello. Okay, so I am officially back in New York. I got in last night pretty late and I did finish the book that I have been absolutely adoring the ever loving shit out of, except for the fact that it literally is perfect for people who love Tate James because it ends on a cliffhanger in a typical Tate James cliffhanger way. And if you don't know what that means, it basically means that it ends in the middle of a scene. <laughs> oh, I love reverse harem so much. This book, five out of five stars. Like I know I didn't get to up to you guys a lot while I was reading it just because like I said, I was very stressed out lately. A lot of things been going on for my job and things like that and some things outside of work. And so um, with all that going on, I've just been like super busy and, you know, I've been reading and not wanting to like actually physically update while reading just because, you know, it was easier not to. So I did finish it and it was five out of five stars and uh, she kissed every single one of them. The only sexy, sexy scene that we had in this was a eating out scene that was it so it really is very much like reminiscent of tate james because of that because tate is the same which like each subsequent book there is more and more like seamy sexy times i know that it's weird because they are all brothers and like normally that would weird me out because i've i've read things with like siblings before and i've always been like oh i don't know kind of strange and like the thing is like none of these scenes obviously have involved her being with all the brothers at once so you know that's not what's happening although she has been with the two twins the two the two twins the twins the twins the twins together but nothing like sexy sexy just like she spoons them in bed all the time and it's so cute her and the twins are the cutest. I literally love the twins. I do have a favorite. You always, you don't always have a favorite, like a clear favorite in a reverse harem. I do have a favorite, 100% in this one, and that is Creed. Creed is my absolute favorite. I love him with my whole ass. I love him with my whole ass. He is so amazing. This book is so amazing, but there is huge triggers in this, obviously, for, um, bullying huge huge bullying in this and slut shaming does occur um there is also some uh, mentions of attempted sexual assault and things like that and obviously just a lot of her ptsd she has a lot of ptsd and so if you are someone who has trigger warnings or content warnings for ptsd do you know that before going into this but it is so amazing i'm so glad to pick this up because like i've been seeing it for a while now and like been super curious about it but 
It was so good. Otherwise, I don't really have any other updates. I literally have to post this vlog tomorrow. I was so I was supposed to finish this book on the airplane, but I didn't because I had to read a book for work on the airplane. Yeah, I had my birthday as well on Tuesday. Thank you so much for everyone who gave me such kind birthday messages. I did come back to my apartment. I have a shit ton of packages here. I do want to say my apartment complex did lose a package of mine that did arrive during the on the 24th of October. I don't know what that package is. If anyone who is watching this did send me a gift from like my Amazon wishlist or something and it was supposed to arrive on the 24th and like the last two digits is like 4-2 of the tracking number, I think. Um, I, I Please let me know because I'm trying to track it down with them but they don't know where it is and I'm really pissed. Really, really pissed. But I'm so annoyed. I can't believe that. Also like irrelevant to this, but did you know that Whole Foods increased the price of their pasta? Whole Foods brand pasta used to be cheaper than brand name like Barilla and DiCecco. And since I've been gone, they've apparently increased the price of pasta. And now it's even, it's actually more expensive to buy the Whole Foods brand pasta than to buy the DiCecco brand pasta. I'm so sorry, but who the hell does Whole Foods think that they are? That they think that their pasta it is better than to check or Barilla. Like what? Like the audacity there. Like I know it's not something that a lot of people get pissed, but like I have pasta like every other dinner. Like it is like my favorite meal to have. And I'm just like, like that's like that's a lot of money. It used to be two dollars forty nine for a packet, and now it's two ninety nine. Like what the actual? Like I'm not happy. I'm so pissed about it. I told my coworker this today and she just laughed at me for a couple hours. Anyway, I'm going to end the vlog. Oh, have I been filming? I've been filming this entire clip sideways, but whatever. That's everything for this vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you did enjoy it, please hit the like button down below. If you want to see more of me, please go to my channel. And until next time, thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.